Alrighty, today's guest is a visionary leader who has had a storied career. He was previously a general manager at Wayfair, one of the largest home good retailers in the world, and it was there that he led a team that drove exceptional customer service and experience by focusing on fast, reliable, and cost-efficient fulfillment. He is now the CEO of Printful, where he continues to build out the enterprise-level customer segment. Welcome to the podcast, Alex Saltonstall. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me. No, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, but for you know, for listeners who are kind of unaware of Printful and are not one hundred percent sure of what you guys do, um, do you mind giving us a brief overview uh, around your business? Yeah, sure. So we help uh, a really wide range of clients build brands, build fan bases, and build e-commerce businesses. And we do that with a unique mix of technology and production on demand uh, apparel. And so let me give you a couple examples to give you a sense of who our customers are. On one end of the spectrum, um, we work with individuals who want to start a business online. They're interested in getting into e-commerce and we provide them with some critical tools that allow them to launch and then grow businesses. On the other side of the spectrum, we work with some of the largest brands in the world, brands like Paramount, NBC Universal, Xbox who see value in our uh, products in a different way. But what's neat about that is all of those customers use our same supply chain solutions. And so if you're a brand new entrepreneur and you're trying to get into your first e-commerce business, you can have the sort of reliability and consistency that somebody like a Paramount chooses when they choose Printful. But we have all the tools that allow you to get started on day one and sell your first product online. That's awesome. So, so fascinating. I'm interested, though, about the history of Printful. Um, in terms of the founding, you know, do you understand, I suppose, a little bit more around kind of how it was founded, where it was founded, and kind of what challenges the company faced maybe in their early stages? Sure. So I should start by saying that I'm not the founder of Printful. Um, I am very fortunate to be able to lead the company now. Um, and one of the things that brought me to this job is just sort of the remarkable history of the company itself and what the team's been able to accomplish over the last 10 years. But in brief, it was founded by a guy named uh, Loris Lieberts, who uh, was based in LA and was actually working on a different uh, project. He was building sort of inspirational posters for business startups. And in that process realized that when he went to produce his products, it was difficult to find consistent printing support. And it just took a lot of his time. And so he learned more about it and he learned more about the space. And after a couple of different iterations, what he hit on was, hey, there's this big opportunity for individuals who wanna start their own brands online in the apparel space, but they get blocked in doing that because doing the production themselves and doing all the fulfillment themselves takes a ton of time and it's super hard and it can be really expensive. Mm. And that led to the question of, I wonder if there's a better way. I wonder if there's a way to do this so that people can produce product on demand, so they only make it when there's an order that comes in. And I wonder if there's a way for one company to provide that platform so that anybody with a unique idea for a design or a business that they wanna promote with apparel products can do that and just focus on the design and the marketing and let somebody else worry about all the production. And that sort of insight led to Printful. And then Printful evolved over a 10 year period. Uh, and what we say internally is, it's a company that helps scale the unscalable. So mm. we took some processes that had typically been, do, been done on a one-off basis and learned how to do that on a bulk production basis in ways that we can add a lot of efficiency that you could never do if you tried to do it yourself. And so over the time, the company has evolved to a point where uh, we can be serving 100,000 small businesses in any given month and these big brands that I mentioned earlier, and we can do it confidently and globally at scale. Yeah, wow. I'm curious though, Alex, in your personal journey, um, what was it about Printful uh, that led you to it? And, and kind of, you know, why did you decide to lead Printful? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. So when I think about a business that, that I wanna be part of, I always start with the customers. Mm. And is it a customer base that um, inspires me and that I believe I can help and work with and partner with in a way that's gonna be exciting, satisfying, and will lead to uh, you know, the potential to really grow, grow the business itself. 
And what I saw in Printful was that customer base that was so exciting. And one of my favorite things to do at Printful is to walk through one of our production sites and to see what's getting produced uh, off of our printers. And what you see when you do that is just the incredible variety uh, and creativity of the designs that people create. So what first brought me to the company was that sense of, wow, I can help 100,000 small businesses thrive in any given month. And I can work with these big brands and help them think about how to build fan bases. And so I found that really inspiring. The second piece that really mattered to me is I came from Wayfair. And at Wayfair, the, we were trying to solve a challenge in the supply chain of how do you deliver a couch to somebody's house in two days or less? knowing that that couch is made halfway around the world, typically on a six month production lead time. It's a really hard problem to solve. And it's one of the interesting problems of e-commerce. And what I realized through that process is if you can shorten the supply chain and you can make products on demand, then you can much better match up the demand profile of the customer base in any given moment of time and produce just to that demand and also not waste. One of the things about the apparel industry is the apparel industry overproduces a lot of apparel, trying to anticipate what people are going to want. But if you produce on demand, then you never have waste because you only produce when somebody makes an order. And so the combination to me of we can better match what the consumers want on any given day without the need to overproduce and create waste, which is just a very harmful for the environment. That's a really neat and interesting combination in e-commerce that I was just excited to work on. Yeah, awesome. I feel like the sustainability aspect of um, business these days is becoming, you know, more apparent and more important than ever. So it's great to see kind of, you know, people leading the charge in terms of producing apparel, especially with minimal waste, which is great. Um, I am curious, though, you know, how has Printful, you touched on it before slightly, but how has Printful evolved and grown since its establishment? And, uh, you know, leading on the back of that, what are some key milestones or achievements that uh, Printful is particularly proud of? Yeah, it's um, I, again, I sort of look back with a lot of admiration for what the Printful team was able to accomplish, uh, you know, before I arrived. So some of these things I'm going to share are things that I had nothing to do with, um, mm -hmm. but I think are points of real pride for the Printful team, deservedly so. Um, I'd point to a couple things. I think one is the partnership that we've built with a number of different partners, but one I'd, I'd point to directly is Shopify. Um, we're the number one partner for print on demand and Shopify, and we created that category with Shopify. And one of the things that I think is really admirable about that, about that was Shopify was in the process of helping entrepreneurs start e-commerce businesses. And Printful sort of matched up that goal in the apparel space and said, we can be their partner as well to help on the production. And so that initial partnership and the way that partnership evolved to the point where now an entrepreneur goes to Shopify to start a site and searches for print on demand and they get Printful first has allowed us to build a really big business um, by finding those merchants in the place where they want to find a partner and, uh, and supporting them effectively. So I would say that's one. The second one that, that I think uh, you know, we look to in our history as a significant moment is becoming uh, a unicorn in business parlance, which basically means your business is valued at a billion dollars. And we were the first technology company with Latvian roots to accomplish that. And so let me tell you the quick backstory on that. Our founder, Loris, is Latvian by background. Now, he was based in LA when he founded Printful, and Printful is uh, a US-based company. But one thing that is different about this business and something that we're really proud of is a big part of our operation and our team are based in Latvia, um, which is a very cool country in the Baltic states uh, in Europe with a really exceptional uh, population of folks who are interested in uh, sort of new and exciting technologies and businesses. And so Printful is a leader in Latvia in the technology sector. And so getting a unicorn status as a Latvian uh, company with deep Latvian roots was a moment of real pride for us as a, as a company. Then the third one I'd point to, and the last one I'd point to, is we recently acquired a, a new business called Snow Commerce. And I think this is a really important moment uh, for us as a business, and I think we'll look back in a couple of years and say that it was a bit of a, a watershed moment. 
because what it allowed us to do is become leaders in the entertainment e-commerce space at the enterprise level. We'd already been working with some of the biggest brands, but with Snow Commerce, we're working with um, a much larger set of, biz of bigger brands, and we're creating an all-inclusive solution for them. And it allows us to do something at the top end of our client base that we couldn't do before, which is really exciting. And we do it in entertainment today, but I think it will also be the pathway to do it in other industries going forward. And while that's exciting for Printful, I think it's also exciting for the rest of Printful's client base, the rest of our merchants, because it gets us uh, a set of expertise that we'll find ways to flow through to those smaller merchants as well to help them build their e-commerce businesses into the big brands of tomorrow. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, off the back of that, like the acquisition of Snow Commerce, you know, I know Printful was traditionally focused on the SMB market. Um, why did you have this strategic shift to focus more on enterprise as well? Yeah, it's interesting. Our, uh, our clients were already taking us there. So Printful grew up primarily working with small and medium-sized businesses. But what the team realized over the last three or four years, as they looked at the client base, is more and more big brands were showing up in our client set that we hadn't actively reached out to, but had found us because of the quality of our production and the consistent uh, global availability of our production. And so we were starting to see big brands already. And so we started reaching out to those brands to understand, you know, how did you come by Printful? Why are you using us, et cetera? And realized that there was a much broader need that those big brands had. And they were asking us increasingly for services that we could build and we, were, and we could support, but we weren't truly experts at them. And so as we looked at that part of our business, which was growing really quickly, we asked ourselves, if we were gonna be truly excellent working at this enterprise level, what would that look like and what capabilities would we need to build? And that forced us to look at a question of, well, we could go build that and it will likely take us two to three years and we're confident we could do it, but it's gonna take time. Or we could find the right partner who's already great at it. And that's what we found in Snow Commerce. We'd already been working with Snow Commerce for four years. They were one of our biggest customers, actually. And they were using the Printful supply chain and marrying it up with what Snow Commerce is truly excellent at, which is uh, running owned and operated e-commerce sites for these biggest brands. So they're good at figuring out who's the fan base? How do we speak to them? What type of experience do we want them to have when they come to the company's website? What's the right range of apparel for them to offer and how do you design those pieces? And so if you take those front end capabilities that Snow is excellent at and you marry them up with the back end capabilities that Printful is excellent at, then what you get is a end to end complete offering that you can give to some of the largest brands in the world to be truly excellent at e-commerce. And so we saw those two pieces together and we realized if we put them together as one entity, we'll be able to do this more efficiently for a larger client base. And that's what led to the acquisition. Yeah, that's fascinating. I'm curious though, with in terms of acquisitions, um, apart from the kind of synergies that arise technologically, you know, what other things are important when looking to acquire a company? Like I assume things like culture is super important. And, you know, if you're acquiring a different company and their culture is completely different, then perhaps it doesn't work. I'm, I'm interested to know a little bit more about that process. Yeah, you, I think you hit on the number one thing. So maybe it's the number two thing, actually. Not by importance, but by sequence. Typically, the way it works, thinking about an acquisition, is is there a strategic thesis that makes sense? Is there something about the company that you're thinking about acquiring that makes the, the two more than the value of the sum of the parts? So one plus one needs to equal three strategically before you think about, yes, this is something we'd want to pursue. So let's say that's in place. Then your question of culture becomes the number one item because you have to assess, are these businesses that sort of approach, think about the world the same way, approach business the same way, think about their teams the same way, and do we think that those teams can complement each other well and work effectively together? And if the answer to any of those questions is no, then it's typically uh, important to walk away because if you don't have a cultural fit, then the, the rest of it can be a disaster. What was interesting for us in the case of Snow Commerce was the strategy was very clear from the start. But then the more we got to know each other as companies, we realized that actually the cultural fit was exceptionally good. And so the thought was, well, instead of just clearing a bar, it's good enough to proceed because the strategy is good. We realized it's actually going to accelerate us further. So the hope here is 
because of the strength of the cultural fit, one plus one can actually equal four. So once you get those two clear, then it's really more of a question of execution. You know, once the two companies come together, can you take it, you know, can you actually realize the promise of the strategic fit? And, you know, we're, we're a couple months into that process. And so far, we're really encouraged about the progress we're making. Awesome. Yeah, look forward to seeing kind of how that partnership grows in the future. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lesson to people who are um, at the stage of perhaps looking at becoming acquired or acquiring companies. Yeah, it's an inval invaluable lesson in terms of culture fit, um, you know, along with the, the strategic partnership. Um, so that's super fascinating. I, I'm interested now, Alex, to kind of launch into a little bit more um, practical tips around uh, launching an e-commerce business. I'm curious to hear from your point of view, you know, why should people actually consider starting a print-on-demand business at all? Yeah, uh, I think print-on-demand is a great way to get into business initially. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is that in with e-commerce, you can set up a commercial business very quickly uh, without a lot of time and with very little uh, investment in terms of money needed. And so, you know, if you think about it, if you want to set up a physical store, you need to go rent the facility, you need to build it out, you need to start driving traffic to it. And before, like, even to open the doors on day one, you've invested a ton of money and a ton of your own time. In contrast with e-commerce, you can start a business very quickly takes you a little bit of time to set it up, but we're talking days, not weeks or months. And then it, and then to actually launch it doesn't cost you very much. And so if you have a really good idea, e-commerce is a nice way to enter your first business engagement. So then the next question is, well, what are you actually going to sell? Like, what what is your business? And if what you want your business to be has to do with physical products, then the next challenge that most entrepreneurs meet is, well, how am I going to stock my shelves essentially? And do I need to go buy a bunch of inventory to start selling? And what you find in most industries is in order to sell something, you need to commit to a minimum order quantity. And so then you realize, well, to sell one unit, I need to go make a thousand. But the problem is you don't know if you're going to sell a thousand. And if you don't, then you never get your money back. Well, one thing that's exciting about print on demand is you don't need to make that commitment either. So now you start your e-commerce store, that's easy. You design a number of products, and if you use the Printful platform, that's easy too. We've got great design tools that allow you to bring your idea to life in the form of a, a, a piece of apparel. But then you only produce the things that win, right? So you might design 15 products. You can offer them on your store in a whole bunch of different sizes and colors without committing to a single one. Then you may find of those 15, five do really well, Five are only okay, and five never sell a single unit. Fine, you get rid of the five that don't sell anything, you figure out what works really well about the five that do, and then you go produce another 10. And the next thing you know, you've iterated your way into a whole collection that may have 20, 30, 50, 100 items, all of which have real sales traction because you've figured out your customer through that process. Mm, that's fascinating. But I suppose, you know, the lower barrier to entry you know, some critics might say that this market is too saturated. Um, what would you say to that? Uh, it's a really big world out there. And there's a, there's a lot of people who I think, given the opportunity, would like to express what makes them unique through what they buy and what they wear. And so, yes, there's a lot of people who sell products online. There's a lot of people trying to establish brands. But I think the market is really, really big. And so I think the big question for anybody thinking about starting your own business, I, I would argue there's two questions. One is, do you think you have a unique idea that's going to speak to a specific audience? You don't need to sell to everybody. You need to sell to a specific audience who is going to, there's going to be something about your design or your concept that's going to resonate well with them. And then the second is, do you have the time to give it? Because this isn't the kind of thing where you launch a store and forget it. Um, you can try that, but it's not likely to work. The people who are most successful are willing to commit time on a regular basis to iterate, to find out what designs do sell best, what products do sell best, and then how do I engage with my audience most effectively, both finding them initially, but then keeping them over time and keeping them engaged with your brand. Yeah, interesting. And, and kind of what if you're not a designer? You know, how do you go about that iterating process? Does Printful make it easy for people to actually, you know, 
find and make these beautiful designs that people will actually purchase? Yeah, I think what's most important is that you have an idea. Whether you're a gifted designer or not is secondary. And so there's different ways to go about that. If you have a brilliant idea, but like me, you're terrible at design. Like I appreciate design, but that doesn't mean I'm good at creating it, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, then the question is, well, who are you going to find to help you? So we have great design tools, but what they're primarily designed to do is to um, take, uh, like we allow you to create a, uh, an image, but you need to have the good idea. And often people will, will do a lot of the design outside of Printful. And then what we're really good at is helping apply that to different products so that it renders well when somebody has designed a t-shirt or a hoodie or a mug or whatever product you want to produce. So what we've found is that people get to that design in different ways. Sometimes they design it themselves, that's great. Sometimes they have a friend and they bring their friend into the process. So they may have the idea, but their friend does the design. And then we also have partnership with a company named Fiverr where you can find a third party designer. And there's thousands of super talented people out there who would love to work on your design. And it actually doesn't cost that much either. You can pay by the hour, it doesn't cost a lot and they can help bring it to life for you. So I would say if you have an idea and you have a sort of customer set who you think will like your idea, don't let your inability to do the design yourself be a blocker because there's a couple different ways to go figure that out. Yeah, awesome advice. Um, from your point of view, I'm curious to hear like in terms of uh, the trends at Printful and print on demand in general, you know, what are some product categories that entrepreneurs should mm -hmm. consider exploring? What are the most popular ones and what are the ones that you think are you know, kind of underserved at the moment? Yeah, um, it's a great question. So I think you, you'd think that the world would run out of an appetite for sort of the basic products, t-shirts, hoodies, things like that. It, it doesn't. So almost all of our successful sites have the basics. And so I would really encourage everybody to make sure that you include that as part of your selection. But what we've found is that there are ways to differentiate yourselves too, both by having a great design apply to similar products like t-shirts, but then also to branch out into new decorating techniques and new types of products. So I'll give you a couple examples of things that are working really well for many of our merchants. The first is using embroidery. Embroidery is interesting because you can apply it to lots of different design looks. It can be as simple as sort of a left breast name of a company. It can be as complex as a really large rendering on the front of a hoodie and in a very graphical design. What's interesting about it is it, it really elevates the look of a product. So once you've stitched something in, it just looks fancier, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. And so we see a lot of corporations and small businesses who are using Printful to promote their business using embroidery because it makes a statement. And then increasingly we're seeing designers designing specifically to embroidery because when you've stitched something into a product, it just has a really rich and tactile uh, look and feel to it. And so embroidery is really interesting and embroidery gets even more interesting because we've started to make available a new embroidery technology that dyes a thread right before it gets sewn into the product. The advantage of that is you move from a world where you're limited by the number of thread colors from, you know, 12, 30, something in that range, thread colors to one where you essentially have an unlimited number of thread colors. And so the richness of the design has really, um, broadened since that new technology was introduced. So that's one I would, I would suggest that people check out. A second one is we have a technology to print uh, all over a garment. So what, essentially what we do is we print on the fabric and then we sew the garment uh, before to complete it. And what that allows you to do is to move from, you know, a shirt like this, where you have a certain print area to one where you can print all over the product. In fact, hold on, <laughs> I have one. So this is one from one of our other merchants. And what you can see is that it's printed all wow. over the garment. Mm. And what that allows you to do is create something that is truly unique. When that walks down the street, people haven't seen something like that before. And so that's available to any of our merchants to use if they choose to do that. And so, you know, I think there's a number of things that are available today that people um, tend to start with the basics and they don't always branch out. And what I encourage our merchants to do is to think about using some of these um, sort of less frequently used categories that make you look more unique by using them. Yeah, awesome. 
I think creativity is a super important aspect of entrepreneurship, uh, especially when it comes to design and creating apparel. Like, yeah, that's it's excellent advice. Um, how does Printful support entrepreneurs in sourcing, you know, these high quality products for their businesses? Yeah. So in a way, what our job is, is to sort of, um, we, we sort of create the canvas and we provide the paints and the paintbrushes, if you will. And then, and then it's really up to our partners to create the final product. And so our job is to provide a number of different tools for our merchants to use. And so when you think about um, sort of the, the base products themselves, we look at all of our categories as having a good, better, and best set of options for you. Mm. And the reason that you'd want to have anything other than the best is because price point matters. And so some of our merchants are trying to appeal to an audience that is very price conscious. And so they want to have the cheapest possible product. So let's use t-shirts just as an example. They may want to have the cheapest t-shirt available, even if it doesn't feel perfect, the fit's not quite as t like perfect for their brand or whatever it is, it's inexpensive. Then on the other side of the spectrum, when you get people who want the, the absolute top end, the premium products, the cotton itself is much softer, the fit may be tailored a little bit better to your brand, it may be an eco-friendly t-shirt, which we see more and more, which is great. And so our job is to give you a range. We only uh, offer things that are gonna print really well. So you can be confident that the quality coming out is gonna look great in terms of the print, the question is, which base do you want to use? Do you want to use a less expensive base or do you want to use a more expensive base that's going to feel a little bit better, but it's going to cost more? And so by creating that range, we think we create the right set of options for our merchants. Awesome. And so let's say now we've got this idea uh, and, and we're you know going to start this print on demand business. Uh, once the e-commerce business, I suppose, is up and running, you know, what are some strategies that you've found and you've seen merchants use that helps drive traffic and increase the sales because a lot of times, you know, people will start this business and then get quite disheartened because yeah. they're not making any sales. So how do these people avoid that? Yeah, um, it's a good question. And, and we see people be successful in different ways, but there tend to be some themes that, that matter. Um, frequently, what we see is merchants who are the most successful early already have a following. So if you have some sort of following through social channels, that's a really nice way of starting to build your brand with people who already know and identify with you. So if you can start to tell the story of the products that you're producing to an audience that already knows you, that's great. Plenty of our other merchants, probably the majority, frankly, don't have a following already. So then the question is, well, how do you distinguish yourself in a pretty crowded field, as you talked about before? Um, and so we tend to think about uh, three different dimensions that matter. The first is paid options. So you can, um, you can go out and pay for ads. That's a strategy that has real expense, but also drives real traffic. And you can learn very quickly how much it's gonna cost you to drive the kind of traffic you want and decide if that's the right uh, channel for you. The second is thinking really carefully about the sort of online properties that you own and control. So think about your website, Think about any blog posts that you make. Think about your social media presence. And the more you tailor that owned experience to tell the story of your products and your brands and your ideas, the more when a customer visits you, they're likely to stay and they're likely to, to return. So getting that base right is really important. And then the third leg of the stool that I'd mention here is sort of earned references. So thinking about, are there others who might recommend your products? Are there influencers? Are there folks who would repost some of your own? Um, things like that so you can use other people's networks to get the word out. Thinking about um, how you use influencers, those connections and sort of social media in general helps you to build uh, traffic and get multiple impressions on people who might be interested in buying the products that you produce. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a very sensible approach in terms of you know, having that multi-strategy and multi-pronged way of doing things. I think with the organic, uh, I think what your point around telling a story and telling a cohesive story across all your channels is super fascinating. I think people should definitely take, uh, oh, you know, keep an ear out for that and, 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 and implement that in their own business. But then also references, you know, 
I've seen people and, and my own businesses thrive particularly on word of mouth referrals and references. And so what I found particularly useful is if you build a product that people love and, and are willing to talk about, then oftentimes you, you find that, stra- you know, you get that traffic associated with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so I completely agree with that. And I think getting that as gold, because having somebody else tell your story is even more compelling than you telling your story directly. Mm, no doubt. And so I'm curious to hear your point or your thoughts on this, but mm. what are some common pitfalls and mistakes that people make when looking to scale their business? You know, given your background and your history, of scaling all these successful products, um, I think it'll be really valuable to hear what you think um, e-commerce entrepreneurs could be doing better. Yeah, I think um, I think the foundation that you lay at the beginning really matters. And I'd give you two examples of that. I think having a great idea but rushing it to market, but instead of taking some real time to make sure that your initial product line looks great, can be a mistake. And so, and that, by the way, is not, that's not the difference in weeks. That can be the difference in, hey, spend a couple extra hours on that initial collection to make sure that when you go out with your first range of products, they look really good and they're likely to resonate with the market. Similarly, thinking about your your website and, and sort of other pieces of your online presence that you own, being really thoughtful about setting that up well makes sense. So take ads, for instance, if you go spend money on ads, what you're trying to do is drive traffic to the place where somebody might buy your product. But if when they get there, the website's not that compelling, the story's not that clear, the products don't look that great, you've just wasted your money. So you're much better off making sure that your foundation is stable before you start ramping up things like ads where you actually spend money to drive traffic. So that's one. The second is, be really thoughtful about what's going to happen when you scale and where you want to spend your time. And one thing that we see is we actually have a lot of people who come to us once their business is already pretty well established because they were doing the fulfillment themselves and they got buried by it. And what they, the story that they'll tell to us is I just got to a point where if I had 40 hours a week to give to this business that I'm completely committed to, I spent 30 hours dealing with the logistics of it and 10 hours doing what I really loved, which was designing products and marketing them. And so using a platform like Printful helps unlock that time because now they can invest all of their time in designing and marketing because they can rely on us to do the fulfillment. And so really thinking about how is your business going to scale and how is your time going to change as it scales is really important to make sure that you can put your time where you think it's going to be most valuable. Do you believe that entrepreneurs need to have that at the very beginning? Or is that something that kind of develops over time? I think it's really helpful to have a bit of a vision. Like I think being at least sort of three months ahead of yourself, like if this happens, here's what I'll do, um, really matters. It's look, you can survive without it, right? And plenty of people just figure it out on a day-to-day basis. But I find that the people who scale the fastest are always anticipating what may happen in the future and how they're going to react to it. So, you know, do you need to have it? No. Is it a good idea to have it? Yes. And frankly, I think it's good in a business to have vision of what you want to create. I mean, is your goal to sell, you know, a hundred hoodies a year with a really cool design? Does that look like a win? If it is, that's great. I I have no judgment about that. But if your goal is to sell 10,000, then your business is going to look really different. And some of the choices that you make early should be different as well. Do you have any specific stories around businesses or merchants that you've you've seen have that strong vision and kind of seen success uh, within their own business? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, there's so there's tons of them, right? Like our business is is built with partners partners like that who started with an idea and have scaled, and their growth and success has become Printful's growth and success. Um, For any of your your listeners who are interested, on our website, we have a couple profiles of some of our merchants that have been really successful. So, um, you know, there's one about, um, it's just a six that I love. There's one about match kicks that I love, like some of these things online. And what you'll see in those stories is they tended to start with 
entrepreneurs that had a great and unique idea for a very specific audience. Like, I believe there's demand for this kind of product and it simply doesn't exist in the world. Then they had a vision for sort of how they were gonna build that. It starts with design, but then it's how am I gonna scale and how am I gonna do production? And you know, it's on our website, right? So we come to it with a bias, but it, it tends to, the, the story tends to evolve the way I mentioned earlier, where they started doing it themselves and they realized, wow, I'm sitting on a big opportunity, but the only way for me to unlock this opportunity if I, is if I can go spend time talking to my customers and designing great products, not worrying about fulfilling them. Yeah, interesting. Definitely, uh, we'll link that in the um, the show notes. So definitely check it out, have a read of those profiles and get inspired. Alex, I want to talk a little bit more about kind of print-on-demand trends and where the industry is heading. Um, how do you actually envision the future of the print-on-demand industry? Are there emerging trends or technologies that you kind of believe will significantly <clears throat> impact it? Yeah, I, so there's a couple that I'd point to. One is... I think the increasing of convergence of screen printing and uh, print on demand. And for, for any of your listeners that aren't familiar with those two terms, screen printing is a traditional printing technique where you essentially layer colors on sequentially onto a product. And it takes a certain amount of effort to do that because you need to create individual or called screens that those colors get laid on through. And because you need to create specific screens and because you need to layer multiple colors, it doesn't make sense to do it for a garment. You really need to produce at volume to make that upfront work make sense. That's what led to the reality that many of your listeners will find that if you want to produce things, there's typically a minimum order quantity. You have to order 50 or more. What print on demand did is change the production method completely and also made it practical to print a single unit. Now, when print-on-demand first came out, the quality wasn't anywhere near as good as screen print, which has been around for many, many, many years. And so there was this perceived gap of like, okay, sure, I can get one, but it sort of looks crappy, so I'd rather do the, the bulk production. Over time, that bulk production isn't getting better because it's been around for a long time, but print-on-demand is getting better and better and better. And so the gap between those two is, is, has closed a lot already. And I think it will continue to close uh, pretty consistently. And so I think that will be fundamentally disruptive to this industry because you won't need to use that screen printing technique if you don't already have demand for thousands of units. So that's, that's a pretty important trend in our space. And it comes back to earlier in our conversation where it's both good for entrepreneurs because you can test across a lot of different potential designs. It's also good for the planet because you don't need to overproduce. So that's one I'd put out there. Um, the second one I'd, th I'd think about is, I think there will be an increasing desire for personalization and customization. Um, I think fundamentally that's been a really hard thing to do. So people haven't felt like it's something they could ask for or expect, but with production on demand, it's easier and easier to have a garment produced specifically for you whether you want to have your name on it or whether you want to have a specific saying on it or whatever whatever your personalization choice may be, I think that's going to become a bigger and bigger part of customers' expectations of what is available to them. And so I think that will similarly lead to more production on demand. And then in terms of techniques, I think uh, you know the embroidery shift that I talked about er earlier to having unlimited color selection, I think that'll be an interesting trend there. Um, there's also a trend uh, in direct -to film which is a different decorating technique, which leads to much more vibrant colors. So there's a number of things out there that I think are going to uh, change the industry over time. I don't see any of them being massively disruptive in the next two years, let's say. I think it's more an evolution than it is a revolution. Um, but I think it's going to get better and better. And as a result of that, uh, customers out there are going to get more and more unique products that they truly love which creates opportunity for our merchants and partners. And how does Printful kind of keep an eye on these trends uh, and, and how do you plan on taking advantage of them? Yeah, so we have, a, um, we have a team who's always thinking about what's next, what's new in terms of both the base products that we produce on, but also the techniques that are out there. And we're fortunate in that at this point, we're a pretty large company. And so we can afford to experiment. And so we're experimenting a lot. 
So when new machines come out, when, when new techniques come out, we will often invest to buy one or buy a couple and try them. And candidly, a lot of them don't work. And so we'll try, and if it doesn't work, we retire it. But the ones that do work, then we really focus on, okay, well, how do we make this scale? How do we make it big? That itself is another really big challenge where we may find a decorating technique that we love, but we can't figure out how to make it work at scale. And candidly, and again, with a heavy bias here, if we can't figure it out, nobody else is gonna figure it out either. And so we're in this sort of constant process of testing to make sure that we can bring new technologies to market and get them in the hands of our entrepreneurs as quickly as possible to, so that those entrepreneurs can then bring their unique designs to market, which then creates the business. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And in your opinion, you know, where are the untapped opportunities or niches uh, within the industry that people should keep an eye on um, and look to jump on those trends? Yeah, so you know, this is a place where I can talk about uh, decorating techniques and base products, but one of the things that I love about this business is we are not experts in design. We are not experts in customer demand. That's what our merchants are great at, right? And so I'm not as capable of saying like, here's the niche you, you should go build products for. What I can tell you is when you found your niche, when you found your unique design idea, what Printful can do is give you the tools that you need to get there. So whether it's the best print on demand or it's the best embroidery or it's the best direct to film or it's an eco-friendly product group or it's print on demand or print all over, like we can give you the tools you need once you've found the idea and the niche that you're going to work on. Mm. Yep, that makes sense. And in terms of another trend that potentially might be, um, you know, taking over the print on demand business, do you see AI as being a, a big disruptor in this space also? Yeah, we think a lot about AI and we're tracking it really carefully. Um, yes, I think AI is going to play a big role. It's interesting that the generative AI has made much bigger strides in the last six to 12 months in text than it has in images. So for certain types of image generation, AI is, is super impressive. And I think more and more of our designs will come through an AI tool, but you need to know where to point it and you need to know how to guide it. And I think what we'll find is that the role that the entrepreneur plays will still be really important. It's just that AI becomes a new tool for them to use. Now, my hope is what that means is even more creativity expressed and even more options out there for end consumers because AI will make it easier to generate more designs. Um, but I don't think it is transformative in the way that it will be for some other industries where the role of the merchant as the sort of designing guide and um, sort of original source of inspiration fundamentally changes. Yeah, that's fascinating. That's fascinating to hear you say that, Alex. Uh, you know, one last question for me before we wrap up, um, thank you so much for your time, is I just want to get an understanding around the deep expertise that you've shown in our conversation. And, and I suppose for entrepreneurs and people in e-commerce, um, that's something that people aspire to. I'm curious to know from your perspective, uh, you know, how did you come across and, and kind of develop such a, a deep knowledge of the space and kind of do you have any tips for people um looking to you know emulate the same way yeah um well first of all that was a nice comment thank you um i i think one of the things that i love most about printful culture which spoke to me when i was thinking about joining the company and that's been really important for all of us to to invest in over time is the importance of learning and always knowing that there's something else that you can learn, think about, adapt to. And I, I don't think there's a silver bullet here. I think it's about spending the time with thoughtful inquiry to learn the pieces that you need to learn to be successful in the part of the business that you choose to be successful in. And so, you know, I haven't been in the production on demand, print on demand space for very long, but two things really helped me. One is I spent a lot of time reading and then the second is I've spent a lot of time asking questions of really smart people in the space who have taught me and being willing to be taught is an important part of that too. Mm -hmm. And so if you're an entrepreneur and you're entering the space, what I would encourage you to do is go find the resources that are out there. And there are amazing resources out there. 
things to learn, experts to listen to, like the one I'm talking to, um, and entrepreneurs that have come before you. And if you find uh, an entrepreneur or a shop that, that's, in, that's doing something that you really respect, reach out. A lot of these folks are, are willing to share their prior experience and their knowledge. And there's, a, there's just a wealth of, of information that you can use to learn. And if you take a learning approach to this space, you can be really successful. Yeah, I want to echo that as well. People, that, people are very open um, to speaking and sharing their knowledge, especially in the e-commerce space. So you know, feel free to reach out um, to people who you think could become your mentors. You know, most likely they will say yes, but you never know. Um, I'm curious, Alex, one quick follow-up. What are the books that you recommend um, specifically for people? Yeah, so I haven't, I haven't found a, a book specific to this industry that was, you know, uh, life-changing, I guess. Like, there's plenty of good business books out there, and I think I would just select those based on your area of interest, whether it's marketing expertise or general management or whatever it is. What I found more interesting is, is more what's available online, articles written about the space, and there, I think giving yourself windows of time to just explore topics is the best solution. It's not like there's one thing that everybody should read, at least that I found. It's more being able to go deep on a topic by linking through finding the experts who you know, speak to you and who sound credible to you and just reading a lot of their content. That, I think, is the most useful approach. Awesome. Alex, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for jumping on to the podcast today. Um, where can people find you? Where can people find Printful? Uh, so start with our start with our website and our social channels. Um, we've got uh, we've got pretty well established communities out there. Um, we welcome folks to join. Uh, we welcome folks to to follow us, um, and we try to create a real community. We're we're conscious that our success is entirely driven by the people that we partner with, the merchants who come with the inspiration every day to create incredible products. Um, and so we try to create community. We'd love to have you join that community. Um, and I think like Ro was saying earlier, you'll find a lot of inspiration and a lot of help uh, by joining that community. So come visit us online and, uh, and we'll, we'll bring you in. Alex, thank you so much. Hey, it was a real pleasure. Thanks for the time.